I am James the Curse, and welcome to the Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls BlizzCon 2013 recap. We're going to go over all the stuff that was said about Diablo 3 and Reaper of Souls here at BlizzCon. The flagship of the Reaper of Souls features was Adventure Mode, which is completely separate from Campaign Mode. In fact, you can jump into any point from the campaign, regardless of your progress. When you do choose to engage in Adventure Mode, you'll be presented with bounties. These are quests. It could be anything from killing a world monster to killing a unique monster, or even potentially clearing a dungeon a la Den of Evil Diablo 2 style. Rewards for these bounties will range from massive amounts of gold, the number that we saw was 130,000, and massive amounts of experience for leveling your Paragon levels, the number that we saw there was 35,000. The golden experience are not the only rewards for Adventure Mode, in fact, one of the main draws is the Nephilim Rift system, which will allow players to go into a completely randomized dungeon, this was formerly known as Loot Runs. The dungeon will be anywhere from 1 to 10 potential tiers, and each level will be completely unique in the sense that 1 could be an interior dungeon, and then level 2 could be an exterior dungeon. The monsters and buffs will also be extremely random in these modes. In fact, a lightning buff that insta-gibbed everything was presented to showcase just how badass the buffs in Nephilim Rifts can be. At the end of the Nephilim Rift, players will encounter a boss, not a traditional Diablo boss, but in fact a random uber boss which has random uber mechanics. And this boss is guaranteed to drop a legendary, but there's a catch. It doesn't spawn in some secluded boss room, in fact, it spawns in with the very monsters of the dungeon. So it could be surrounded by three elite packs you just don't know. And that's some of the fun of Nephilim Rifts. It really provides a randomly difficult and interesting experience every time you do it. Also showcased was a new zone from the expansion with new creatures called Boggets. These Boggets are extremely charismatic. In fact, the little ones will try and run away while the bigger brutes will kick them towards the player. Does that sound like the Fallen? Because they are actually relatives of the Fallen. Also, there is something called a Bogget Trapper which will hide in towers and throw bear traps at you and shoot you with its blowgun. These creatures were part of a more fleshed out monster experience and design. In fact, they wanted to elicit emotion from the players when killing these monsters. Also, systems were implemented so that players respected the monsters more. In fact, archers back away from you now instead of turning and running and shooting, making them more believable and more difficult at the same time. Also showcased was Pandemonium, the battlefield between angels and demons, which will culminate at the end of Reaper of Souls. In fact, Malphael's very fortress is in that zone. They gave us a look at how a zone was created and what kind of ideas were thrown around when conceptualizing such a zone. Pandemonium was meant to be a barren, but very battle-scarred place. All in all, the panel was a very eye-opening experience. It didn't just preview some of the stuff coming to Reaper's Souls, but actually gave everybody involved an eye into the development of how these games are made. If you've never come to BlizzCon, I would highly recommend it, just so you can see some of the cool stuff and all the effort that goes into creating these worlds. Thank you for watching. My name is James Duggan with Curse, and as always, enjoy the game.